all the folks that didn't believe in Bobby Brown in the beginning, um, the people who said, you know, I could never make it, people who said, you know, you're a bum and you, you'll never be anything, you know, those people, you know, the teachers that I used to, they used to teach me in school, that, <laughs> they used to put me in a corner, you know, all of them, you know, it's for all of them. What's good, Keys and Queens, your boy Byron CEO, Sunrise Enterprise, and today we are back with another video. So today I got a good one for y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna go ahead and hit y'all with something a little unique, something different, man. We're gonna get into the life of Bobby Brown. We're gonna talk about the rise of Bobby Brown. And before I get into, you know, the story and get into the boy talk, I wanna talk about why I chose Bobby Brown, right? Now, a lot of you, uh, you know, it's 2021. You know, Bobby Brown was popular in the 80s, 90s, something like that. But again, man, self rise enterprise is about, you know, coming from the mud, rising up, and having the ability to have the strategy to do so. And I feel that taking from other people's life, studying other people's life, going into the story, history, you know what I'm saying? And being able to pull and extract certain things from people's, you know, failures, successes, you know, uh, cons, pros. I feel like we could take all that, put it in a pot. Or at least take a few things and put it in a, a specific pot and build off that pot, you know what I'm saying, to create the, the perfect concoction. Alright, so but Bobby Brown is prolific as far as being one of the first people, first pioneers to take R&B and sh the street hip hop, you know, and bring it together. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get it wrong. New Edition had a little something like that. But Bobby Brown was like the next level. He was like the overdose. He was like OD on it. You know what I'm saying? As far as take, being able to sing and kick a rap. So when you think of uh, Chris Brown, you know what I'm saying? You got you to gotta mention Bobby Brown. When you think of anybody that has taken, uh, that has the ability to sing and to rap, you got to start with Bobby Brown. And I feel that <clears throat> people like him don't get the recognition that he deserves until he's dead and until he's already gone. You know what I'm saying? I see that they did a little movie on him. I just recently read his book. Uh, I would rate that book from one to 10. I would get that book a 10, right? So I'm not gonna waste no more time. I'm gonna really get into the story, man. I really wanna just say that Bobby Brown is like prolific, man, when it comes to just his way of being able to dance. Now he wasn't the best singer and he'll admit that. But as far as being on the stage and dancing, you know what I'm saying, we can we can give him the title of King of the Stage, you know what I'm saying? Because he was he was just he was just the way he was dancing, man. There was nobody like that. He was like he would push it all the way to the edge with the way he would do things and shut the crowd down. Alright, so without further ado, man, let's not waste no more time. Let's get right into this video with Bobby Brown. Alright, so we're gonna start with the early days, right? So the early days, okay, now Again, this board is only so big. If it made it to this board, that means it was, you know what I'm saying, it was an important event. You feel me? So we're gonna go ahead and start with the early days. We're gonna go off into the 80s, and then we're gonna break it off into new edition, and then we're gonna go off into the rise. You know what I'm saying? What actually made him rise and what made him stand out. You know what I'm saying? So let's let's get right into it, right? So he was born February 5th, 1969, in Boston, Massachusetts, right? And everybody, everybody got a ghetto, everybody comes from a hood, you know, from, I'm from Florida, so there's thousands of hoods, you know, throughout, uh, throughout the United States, you know, so everybody got a hood that they can always remember from their childhood and somewhere that they can pull from, you know, remember them summer times, remember going to the pool, remember having them summertime friends that are no longer around or are around, but you really don't fuck with them like that no more. Or they're around that y'all the best of friends. We all have those... We all have those those stories. You know what I'm saying? His was no different, right? In 1971, he performed at James Brown concert at three years old. Now, he didn't perform, but, you know, James Brown would allow kids to come up stage and, you know, dance with him. You know what I'm saying? Or at least, you know, start dancing to the music 
that he was singing. Already, James, I have to ask you one serious question here. I understand you already have started divorce proceedings. Does that mean that you're now eligible? Oh, uh, no. I'm, yes, I'm eligible. I'm singing. I, I want to mingle. You want to mingle? Yeah. Now, the women love you when you get out there. Why do you think that is? What did you say? The women love you when you get out there. Why is that, ladies? Well, I'm asking you. Huh? Because I look good. What do you think good. that is? You I look good. I smell good. I yes. feel good. And you sing good. And make love good. Oh. Well, there we are. We don't have to ask anybody else. We got that from the source. <laughs> there, there you are. Um, his first show was at Orchard Park in 1978. Now, again, Orchard Park is the projects or the neighborhood that he that he dwells from, right? This is what this is what he started. This is this is what made him. This is the essence of Bobby Brown. So when you look at Bobby Brown, his style, everything, you gotta go look at Orchard Park. You know what I'm saying? You gotta go look at the influences he had in his life. You feel me? His first show uh, was at nine years old. He did good, but he froze up. And his sister ended up, was happened to be a judge. Uh, and he ended up running to his sister and he kind of folded up, man. But he ended up bouncing back. I said it right here. He bounced back next week and he ended up shutting the show down at nine years old. He was doing the Jackson 5 uh, song. I forgot what it was. I forgot what song it was, but he was in, he was doing the Jackson 5 because he loved Michael Jackson, especially Janet Jackson. And we'll talk about that later on. Him and Janet Jackson actually had a thing around 1988, 1989. You know what I'm saying? It shows it in the movie, but again, it also is also in the book. And he narrates the book. So this is life before fame. This is life before, you know what I'm saying? Because he, you got to remember, around like 10, 11, he was already traveling. He was already with New Edition. So this is just the early days. This is just what made him, right? Orchard Park had different talent shows every week back, to, back in them days in the 70s, you know, early 70s. Every week they had talent shows. Man, I bet you it was, I bet you like summer times were beautiful back then, man. I bet you it was just full of love. And everybody had love for each other. There wasn't nobody trying to kill each other. And niggas was trying to be something they wasn't. Everybody had originality. Everybody had their own style. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, man. We're going to go ahead and press off into, you feel me, the 80s. But this is where, you know what I'm saying? This is where he really got his, you know what I'm saying, his essence. His essence. This is the root of Bobby Brown. His grandmother actually was his biggest influence. His grandmother was his biggest fan. His, grandma, his grandmother had a, 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 a room full of music and he would go there and he would just sit there and listen to different, different forms of music. And again, this is important when, when, you know what I'm saying, when we're raising our kids or even now while we're still in our youth to go out there and get these influencers from the greats. You feel me? So if you're watching my channel and you're already hungry for knowledge, this is the way, man. Go out there, go find a master and study his ways. You feel me? Uh, but then again, you have to not study his ways, you know, be your own man, <clears throat> but take a little bit from him. Take a little bit, you feel me? Take the good things, you feel me? And leave everything else on the table. Still honor the negative, but keep that to the side. Take the positive, right? So let's jump off into the 80s, man. His first rap song that he heard was by Deborah Harry. Now, I don't know who that is, but I'll go ahead and throw a picture right here of that rapper. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and back in them days... In the 70s, it was a little, you know, I don't know. I never listened to this, so I couldn't really give my opinion until I listened. He took true inspiration from Grandmaster Flash. You know, and if you know Grandmaster Flash, you know what I'm saying, he's one of the, you know what I'm saying, like pioneers when it came to that, that funk, that hip-hop, you know what I'm saying, that movement, you feel me? So much so, he changed his name to Flash B. But what really sparked... You know what I'm saying? His love for performing. Again, I spoke about this just a few minutes ago. Was his grandmother. His grandmother really gave him the love for performing. So, along with a little bit of influence from Flash B. Along with performing. Along with already having the ability to get on stage. You know what I'm saying? And want to please the crowd. You know what I'm saying? But all started from wanting to please just your grandma. Those are little things that we got to take into consideration when we're looking at a great, a pioneer, an innovator, someone that is an underdog. He was an underdog, but he pretty much solidified himself to be one of the greatest to ever do it. And when and, and you know when he goes, 
he's never truly going to leave. He's never going to leave because his music will always last until the test of time because he's already established his lane. He's already established his foundation. He's already made it to the top of the mountain, per se. At age 10, he fried chicken and cocaine. Now, the reason why I put that is because I feel like it's a big part of his life, right? When he grew up in a house, he grew up in a house with a lot of kids where his mom would help out, you know, certain people on the streets, bring them in and feed them chicken wings, french fries. You feel me? She would give away dinner plates and help out the community and the neighborhood. When he went to fry his chicken for this particular day, you know, you know, the chicken was a little funny, you know. So, you know, the story says that his mom walked in and realized like, okay, you know, my son do my son's independent, whatever, whatever. But then went to tap into like, okay, you know, this ain't adding up. What do you use for, you know, to flower this chicken? And boom, once she realized one and two went together, she realized that, you know, saying she was feeding her son cocaine. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that was a big part of his life. Why? Once he found out that his mom was selling drugs also out the house, this made him look at life from a different angle. Like, you know how you like, um, you know, when you go to middle school and you have that one friend who brings, you know, uh, some weed or brings something, exposes you to something that you wouldn't have seen before. This is that turning point for him. Yeah, man, I feel like this was a pivotal point in his life and it really changed his perception. He he went from a child to like a, you know, awareness. Awareness kicked in, the consciousness started, you know what I'm saying, being more broadened, you know what I'm saying? It was broadened by this little scenario. I'm pretty sure it was a lot more conscious, even at three by him to get on stage and want to do certain things. But, you know, people, certain people don't become conscious until later on in life or until something happens, or to a certain events, or to a certain age, or something, you know what I'm saying? So, you feel me? I thought that was a big point in his life, and it ended up being, you know, something that he talked about in his book, and I wanted to put that in, this, in, in my channel, that way people know, you know, he, he was already exposed to this shit at like 10 years old, you know, as far as like the drug gang, cocaine gang, his mom was pushing it damn near all his life, so, you know, she was a big time drug dealer too so it, not big time but big enough to pay her bills and live in a house and for them not to really want for that big enough to help other people in the community let's just leave it at that all right so we're gonna move on real quick there was an altercation between his mother and the cops right and when this altercation happened he saw his mom get actually hit with a stick by the cops and this really this really scarred him too you know what I'm saying? As far as having a hatred for the cops. And this hatred was like almost, he would use this as ammunition later on in the future. And we'll talk about that, right? And when they hit her, uh, they ended up taking her to jail. I think his dad was at work. So there was, no, there was nobody there to watch them. So they took the kids to a Catholic center or some shit like that. And the priest tried to violate Bobby Brown and you know what I'm saying that end up being a pivotal point in anybody's life man like you know like he tried to he tried to violate him and you know what I'm saying like he felt like nobody was there to help him nobody was there to come get him this was a big this was a big point in his life this really scarred him you know what I'm saying on top of on top of him getting out uh, from the center and from the priest and all this other shit like that the little situation that happened um, there was the death of his friend, Jimmy. If you watch the movie, then you already know about the situation with his friend. I guess they somebody tried to steal their bikes, and um, you know, what I'm saying uh, he ended up getting stabbed with a knife. And instead of them leaving the body right there, they end up moving the body. And I guess you know something went wrong by them moving the body. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he ended up dying. You know, and that was a big turning point in his life. So. He always had this, you know what I'm saying, there was a, the, at a young age, he went through a lot, man. He got shot at a, at a party, you know what I'm saying, over a girl because the dude was jealous. He got shot in the kneecap and he actually hid that bullet wound from his mom, you know, back in the 80s, back in the 80s or the 70s. Imagine that. This is more so like 10 all the way up before New Edition. So again, this is the rise of Bobby Brown. I try to get, I'm trying to get into that intricate details and the, the fine details of his life and point out some I really don't know him so I can't really 
say, oh, uh, you know, this is how his life was. This is exactly how I don't. I'm just going off what I read, research, documentaries, books. I'm trying to get everything into one so that way we can really get the full meat out of the bone. So let's go ahead and move on to the next session, which is new edition, right? So in 1982, um, you know, I'm not going to get into all the story, but basically new edition won a talent show, right? They came second, right? Because one of the voters did that on purpose so that way he could sign them because he didn't want them to come first because the, the prize was whoever got whoever came first got a contract to the record label he, he didn't even get to sign the boys because somebody else ended up getting you know what I'm saying they found a few hits and um, but he went solo so I, I kept it real short on New Edition because man if you watching if you even watching this and you don't know about New Edition Stop this video, well finish this video first, then go watch the documentary on New Edition, then come watch Bobby Brown. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you gotta know, you gotta know to know. I'm gonna keep it real short with New Edition, right? So they found a few hits, but he went solo due to the fact that bro was just more of a standout. He liked to please the crowd, and a lot of people didn't like that that was in the group, you feel me? And this ended up breaking the group and people, they voted him out because other outside influences said that if you can't get this right, we finna go ahead and just cut everything and everybody just gonna go back home. You know what I'm saying? So they voted Bobby Brown out in which this, he went solo. My career got started through a group called New Edition. We started in, in 1979, I think, 78 or 79 in the streets of Boston, Massachusetts. and um, we started doing talent shows in, in the local nightclubs and schools, and we did this one big talent show, which was for a record, recording contract and a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars, one or the other. From there, you know, things lifted for the group, but at the same time, you know, the group went through a lot of problems with, uh, you know, just just different things, bad management, us being young. We got it all situated and signed to a bigger label, which was MCA Records, and um, that became home for us. And um, from there, we did like two albums together, and then I went off to be a solo artist. When he came out with his first album, The King of the Stage, right, it did okay. Then he started producing more songs. He started getting with certain producers like Teddy Riley, L.A. Reid, Babyface, certain people like that. And they came out with songs like Rock With You, My Prerogative, Turn Roni, Don't Be Cruel. You know, certain shit that we still listen to today, man. You know, and I was born in 94, so, you know, this is before my time. So that's just going to show you, like, the way that this music is. Like, it's going to go on generation after generation. This music is meant to last forever. It's evergreen for eternity. That just go to show that for a young black male, he was at the top of the world. You know what I'm saying? And for any other black male watching this, we can take that, we can look up, and we can rise one day, right? But we got to start with ourselves, you know what I'm saying? And when we get ourselves right, we can touch our city, we can touch our state, then we can, st we can start touching the country, and then eventually, we'll have the whole world in our hands. Let's move on to the last little part, right? He meets the queen. Y'all already know who the queen is. I did a video on her. Whitney Houston, the queen, man. Uh, we got to put some respect on these people's name, man. Like... This this lady is a queen in God form, you know what I'm saying? Like sent from God 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 himself or herself, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like Bobby Brown and her coming together was just beautiful, but it also was a destruction that both of them just couldn't come back from. And I'm going to speak on that in my next episode. And when I say destruction, I just mean that their love caused everybody else to throw them off as far as for the long term, you know what I'm saying? And um, the music was irrelevant at some point due to this. So, I appreciate y'all, man. Again, my channel really is about, you know, gathering my people, teaching my people, reforming my people, giving truth to my people, you know what I'm saying, strategizing. I just use other people to do it, you know what I'm saying? So, if you like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, show some love. I appreciate y'all. One love.